This is Mitch, and welcome to the 1000 Houses podcast. I have uh, John Jackson here. We've been friends for a long time. I've had him down to the ranch. We've been, met at places all over the country. Uh, he is a formidable force in the lease option department. So, uh, you know, everybody needs to develop that one niche, and that's what John's done, and his niche is lease options. So how long have you been doing this, John? How are you doing? Man, Mitch, uh, good to see you. First of all, uh, uh, I got to say that introduction sucked pond water from a duck's ass. I thought there'd be like music, uh, flames, something like a, a da -da -da -da, you know, something powerful, you know, <laughs> like I would drop from the ceiling. And that was like, like Mitch is in a closet talking about me. This is, you know, I thought there'd be something more <laughs> exciting, but, but, you know, moving along. Yeah. All right. Here, here's someone that'll tell you that you don't deserve it. I knew it was you. Like, I, I know that. Ah, jeez. Mike, oh man. The, I, what do I got to do about those Facebook ads? Are those like pay per click when you send them to me? Or because I, I click the hell out of them. I, <laughs> yeah, my credit card loves you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Take it easy. All right. Yeah, we're targeting you, Mike. Are you getting the ones for the adult diapers? <laughs> all right so confetti and balloons all aside this know. is going to be a great podcast so yeah so i've been doing <laughs> so adult diapers lease options and mike so so i've been doing lease options for 19 years this is i think the 19th year i've been yeah this would be the 19th year i've done lease options uh and the reason i really focus on lease options to begin with is because it didn't involve it didn't involve any any capital, no money, no risk. I didn't have to fix a house or anything like that. I was simply locking up a property, a nice property with a contract, and then assigning that contract. Uh, so it didn't involve any any money or, or risk or uh, estimating repairs or anything like that. So I've been doing it for 19 years. And there's a saying, you know, the riches is in the niches. Uh, in your case, you know, your main uh, stream, your main niche is in, in owner finance. You know, buying buying the the inexpensive houses, then turn around owner financing. That's your niche. Um, my niche is uh, is lease options. Uh, and so that's what I've done for, for 19 years and have trained people for, oh my gosh, I think I started training people in 2008 or nine, I think. Let's, you said something that would appeal to a lot of people out there. You don't really need a lot of money to do this. Is that correct? When I started, I spent $97 on a, um, on a training, on a course. It was the most basic, basic course you could ever imagine. Uh, the website, I think, is still there. It's, uh, and you're going to think I'm joking, it's nakedinvestor.com. It's actually naked-investor.com. Uh, Michael Carbonari out of Florida uh, was, training, was teaching lease options. I bought his course for $97. And then as far as actually doing a deal, I spent, I believe, $68 on a sign to put in the yard um because it was aluminum and ugly as sin but the point was i didn't have to make payments on the house i didn't have to buy the house i wasn't fixing up the house uh doing any repairs or anything i was simply putting the lease option together tying up the contract put my sign in the yard and someone drove by and said oh my god i want that house so you're dealing in pretty houses which a lot of people are under the impression that when you start out in the business you've got a wholesale you have to deal with ugly houses so how does it work? How, how are you able to go in and get pretty houses with no money? Yeah, so the way it works is you're simply tying them up with a contract. So what we're looking for, let me back up a little bit, Mitch. You know, in, in real estate, when it comes to sellers, there's different levels of desperation, right? Uh, it starts off with for sale by owner, then for rent by owner, MLS, houses that are for lease. And then you could jump down to like say wholesale, then subject to, then foreclosure and short sale. We're dealing with the top four levels, people that are for sale by owner a lot of times that had tried to sell the house for a month, maybe two months. It's just sitting there. We are plan B, right? Uh, so uh, we're not working with homeowners that are you know, just desperate to get out of this house and sell for 40 cents or 50 cents of the dollar. We're simply the plan B for homeowners that have had their house in the market for a month or two months or three months, or even for rent by owner. You know, for rent by owner, Mitch, Anybody that has their house for rent by owner is going to fall pretty much into one of two categories, either an investor, which we work with, or an accidental landlord. There again, we can work with them. Either way, for rent by owner is really low-hanging fruit as well. So we work with for sale by owner, for rent by owner. We work with houses that are listed. Matter of fact, uh, before we got on this call, uh, a little bit before we got on this call, I was pulling a list 
for houses that were listed on the market over 30 days in the Houston area is over 2,200. And 2,200 people are about to get a piece of direct mail from me. Okay, so uh, explain, you, you said a term, I thought it was interesting, uh, unintended landlords or accidental mm -hmm. landlords. Accidental landlord, yeah. If you've got a for rent by owner, it's either an investor, right, that has rental properties and they're renting out their houses, or it's someone that had tried to sell the house, couldn't sell it, and you know they've had to move on and when the house doesn't sell, what do you do with it? You stick a for rent sign in the yard. They're an accidental landlord. They didn't mean to become a landlord, right? And so the landlording is not their shtick. And so we, we come in and say, hey, I saw your house for rent, would you consider selling on a, on, a, on a lease purchase? And if they say no, then we say, oh, you're an investor. And then we shut up. And then if they go, and if they say, yeah, I'm an investor, great, are you buying more houses? Because I get houses all the time that you may be interested in. And you know, I'm really you know, pressuring them you know, to, to, to see where they are. But if I ask them, uh, if, I, if, I, if it's a friend by owner and I say, hey, would you consider a, a lease purchase instead of just renting it to God knows who? And if they go, uh, they go no, no, I'm not really, I'm not interested in that. And I say, oh, are you an investor? And then I shut up and if they go, well, no, not really. Okay, boom, I got them. It was an accident. Landlord. Accidental landlord. Or, or it's not their shtick, they're probably getting worn out by the tenant. Yes. Probably yep. killing them. Because they yep. didn't know the right person to put in the first place. And, and heaven forbid, put in a family member, right? Oh, God. Yes. Yeah. That makes, that makes Thanksgiving a little uncomfortable. You know, yeah. could you please pass the uh, mashed potatoes, uh, Sally? And how's that rent payment coming? <laughs> yeah. How's the last three months you owe me? So John has a lot of free stuff at, at, at his website. He's got a free training going on out there. I want everyone to go to 1000houses.com forward slash J Jackson. And anything we talk about on here or any you know, websites or blogs or podcasts or whatever he wants to refer to here, it'll all be over in the show notes because that's where 1000houses.com forward slash J Jackson will take you. And that way you don't have to write anything down. All you got to remember is Jay Jackson as the keyword there at the end. And uh, you can get over there anytime you want to and find it. Talk about this. You know, a lot of people think you got to start off an inexpensive house. What are the average price ranges of the house you're dealing in? Yeah. So the house that we're working with typically are above $200,000. So, so what in the hell is going on there, Mitch? Tell Mike to just get out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't Mike, Mike, Mike needs to understand. I'm a very important person in the real estate world. Okay, I, I don't have time for these distractions like that. They're um, coming out now. Okay, <laughs> man, you thought Ron Legrand was a, was an ass. Wait till you get me and some noise in the background. I'll tear somebody's butt up. So the average price of the house that we do is about two hundred thousand and above. That's and I say two hundred thousand. It depends on the area. You know, we do houses across the United States, or my students do. Here in Texas, the average house we do is about three hundred twenty-five thousand dollars because that's about the average. You know, most places that we're working with. So again, for a three hundred twenty-five or three hundred fifty thousand dollars house, these are nice, pretty move in ready houses, but the owner simply needs a plan B. Whereas with wholesaling, it's totally different. You're working with typically uh, ugly, torn down houses. I mean, I, oh my God, I'm on all these email lists from these wholesalers, right? And I see these houses they're selling and I'm just like, I'm so thankful that I don't do that. I have no desire to try to wholesale, uh, you know, a $30,000 crap box in the middle of nowhere, you know, having to, first of all, because I had to spend all that money in the marketing to, to get that lead, then negotiate with that seller, then try to estimate repairs, then market it. I just don't have time for that. Whereas with us, uh, nobody else is targeting these sellers. Nobody else is targeting the for sale by owners the way we are, or the listed houses that have some, have some age on them uh, the way that we are, or the expired listings the way that we are. We're the only ones marketing them, so there's no competition. We don't have to estimate repairs. Uh, and we don't have to negotiate on the price. The owner's going to get, for the most part, really what they're asking for the house. Well, give us a case study, like some deal that you did recently, kind of outline a typical lease option deal that you're happy with. Okay. So uh, with the lease option assignment, which I really specialize in, it's a one-time payday. All right. So you get paid on the assignment, kind of like when you assign, uh, like, like a wholesale deal when you assign that. 
So uh, let me think here. For example, uh, just had a house in down near Austin. I think it was not too far from Canyon Lake, actually. Down near Austin, it was four hundred twenty-five thousand. A student did four hundred twenty-five thousand uh, dollars on that one. He it was. I don't remember what that one was asking. I think about four twenty or four fifteen. Anyway, we set the price. I don't want to confuse people in the podcast. We set our option price a little bit higher than what the owner is asking, um, and we get paid a down payment that goes towards. Uh, we get paid an option fee that goes towards the purchase of the house. On that one, I think it was four twenty-five. I think the student did uh, twenty. It was almost twenty-five thousand assignment fee on that, and had it for less than three weeks. So nobody was marketing to this homeowner that had had his house in the market for over two months, almost three months. My student marketed to him, locked it up with a contract, uh, uh, marketed that that house and that contract, and got a buyer within within three weeks. It was almost I think it's twenty-five thousand down. So the buyer, the buyer that couldn't sell and the buyer that couldn't buy, uh, he put them together and closed the deal. So, so, I'm, so I'm taking it that you, you're, the, the financing was subject to, so you did a subject to deal on that? No, that's no? the thing. So we're not taking the house subject to. So there's no transfer of title with the lease option or with the lease option assignment. We're simply, we're simply, we're simply locking up the house with the lease option contract, okay? And then so there's no transfer of title between our company and the seller. We then market that to uh, the end buyer who typically needs a little bit of time to get financed. So we're not locking up the house to the subject too. And then what happens, nice. Mitch, is the buyer within 12 months will get financed and cash the seller out. So you get paid to, to assign the lease yep. and to someone and then they move in and they're, they're exercising the lease, but they got so much time to refi. And get everybody taken care of, or, or, or get the yep. get the owner of the house taken care of. Okay, so I I, I get it. Um, you know there are plans that you use when you have money, and and there's also plans and strategies that you can use when you don't have money. And if you don't have money, which is where I started out, did you have a bunch of money when you started out, John? No, I'm telling you, I spent sixty eight dollars on a sign plus ninety seven dollars. So yeah, there you go. So almost everybody starts out broke in this business, and you have to use strategies that allow you to navigate and make some real money with not a lot of money out of your pocket because you don't have any. And so if that suits, if that, if that fits you and you're out there listening, maybe you need to go to 1000houses.com forward slash Jay Jackson, check out the free stuff, um, check out his free training. There's a whole bunch, I mean, John gives away a lot of free stuff. And I, I do too, by the way, at 1000houses.com, do you get chastised for that because some, people chastise me like you're giving everything away. I, said, no. I, I do. I, I give away a lot of stuff. Uh, I give away the only thing I, here's the thing. The only thing I do not give away, I never have, and never will. The only thing I don't give away for free are my 17 page lease option contracts. They cost me over $30,000 in legal fees and through different law firms that have drafted for the different States for Texas and different States. And so that's the only thing I don't give away. I give away my seller price sheets, my lease option calculator. Uh, I give away my compare, all kinds of documents I use every day. So you guys get over there at 1000houses.com forward slash Jay Jackson. I mean, there's really enough from John to, to know a, a good amount about what's going on. It's always best to get a coach or something when you decide that that's exactly what you want to do, because you're going to learn, you know, one way or the other, you're either going to pay the street or you're going to pay a guy that knows you can measure a good coach by what he makes you. You'll never be able to measure the coach by how many deals he kept you from losing or how many lawsuits he kept you out of or you know, how that document can save your ass that he spent $30,000 on that, that you don't have to spend that much money on because someone's already done it. And, uh, um, you know, these documents are live documents half the time because we go around and we think we have ironclad documents and then something happens and you go, how do I stop that from happening? So you got to add something to the document. Well, yeah, here's as many, when you've been in the business as many years as John's been in there, this document's, you know, has gotten less and less and less and less holes in it. So finally we, we, we'd like to think we're bulletproof. You know what I mean? So are we ever really bulletproof? You never know, but you, never man, know. you, yeah. you can go a long, long, long ways down the road to avoiding a lot of different things. I know that I spent a ton of mon money on my contracts and um, my contracts with private lenders, my contracts with people that are buying my houses. And uh, what, a, what, what a blessing to have someone who's already been down the road to do that and not only get the documents, but get some quality time. Probably you have boot camps or, or, or is it all online that you train? Yeah, so, 
so we've got so we've got the uh, what we call the you know the home study where people get the we actually still we're still old school Mitch I still like the physical binder we ship a physical binder to them uh, with the entire operation manual that they can go through they get online access to a uh, to videos that take them step by step by step they get all my documents all my contracts no matter what state they live in uh, so you get access to absolutely everything and we are, we even include a certificate to a three day boot camp we typically do. Two, uh, two to three three-day boot camps a year, um, normally in Texas, just because it's centrally located. Uh, and that, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm the only person in the U.S. that offers a three-day lease option boot camp. I can assure you there's some great music at my boot camp and some inappropriate jokes. So, uh, But uh, it's a lot of fun. We actually do live seller calls there at the boot camp and where students will bring us their leads and we'll, we'll call the sellers live. I let everybody hear how those conversations go. So it's a it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Those kinds of events with the with the live calls are really educational because you can you can talk or try to describe or or but when you hear it going live and you hear the the objections live and you hear the responses live and really isn't that what it's all about is is um, learn all the objections that are possible and then learn the answers to those objections so that you don't have to um, mem- you know you don't sound like you're just repeating that you actually own the response and you and that's how you that's how you consummate deals and it's got to be some repetition and you won't be the best that you are ever going to be the first day you get on you're going to you're going to fall down a couple of times but it's all in the repetition you know, you know, uh, Mitch. When I uh, talking about selling, uh, talking to sellers again, one of the great things about the lease options versus wholesaling is the conversation is totally different with a, with a wholesale deal. Which I know you buy a lot of houses from wholesalers, but those wholesalers that grit, they they get those deals. First of all, they're typically cold calling or texting someone that just happens to have a piece of property that isn't even marketed for sale yet. So the first thing they have to do is uh, overcome the hurdle of tracking down that that property owner then the next hurdle is getting them on the phone then the next hurdle is talking them into at least being interested in selling the property and once they got that far i go okay great so you're interested in selling the house finally all right now let me uh, beat you down on a price right now they got that hurdle overcome with the lease option almost everybody we're talking to is already trying to do something with the house whether it be selling it or renting it uh, so we don't have all those objections and hurdles to overcome so much. But when it comes to talking to sellers, I teach uh, to be the doctor, simply be the doctor. Uh, you know, when you go to the doctor's office for some, for some reason, and you go sit and you, you're sitting in the, in, the, in the room there on the, on the table, an exam table. Well, the doctor isn't outside the door going, oh, my God, I hope he doesn't ask me any tough questions. I hope he's not rude to me. You know, no, he just comes in and says, OK, Mitch. What's going on? And you go, well, I got this, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you're telling him where it hurts or what the symptoms are. And he's writing down notes. Uh huh, uh huh, got it. And then he will typically write, you know, he'll tear off this piece of paper, hand it to you and say, Mitch, here's a prescription. Take two a day, blah, blah, blah. Now, it's not the doctor's job to make you take that prescription. It's not the doctor's job to make you go to CVS. The doctor's only job is to listen to what's going on and give his recommendation. Here's your prescription. And if we approach sellers like that, it takes off a lot of the anxiety of, oh my God, what if they you know, yell at me or what if I don't say the right thing? No, you're just listening and having a conversation saying things like, uh, uh, so do you still live in the house or have you already moved out? Oh, you moved out? Wow, when did you move out? Uh-huh. Wow, three weeks ago. Okay, and so it's been sitting vacant for three weeks. All right, and so is it? Is our furniture still there? No, it's vacant. I just totally vacant. Okay, so, um, so what are you going to do if the house doesn't sell the next couple of weeks? Really? Okay. And you're writing that and you're writing, taking notes. And then in my case, typically when I tear off that prescription, that prescription is for a short term, full price lease purchase. Now it's not my job to make that seller take that prescription. He may not take it at first, but more times than not, if in a week or two weeks go by and that house still hasn't moved, he's going to call me back and talk to me about that prescription. Say, Hey, tell me about that prescription. Perfect example, man. Perfect example. What do you say to the guys out there that are that are new and trying to get into the business and they're listening to this strategy for the first time and they've heard a lot of other strategies? I mean, what's your advice to these guys? Anybody starting off in, in real estate, you know, it's different now than it was when I was starting off, when you were starting off. Uh, Craigslist, uh, you know, wasn't even around, I don't think, back then. Um, and so now there's so many uh, strategies and so many, um, there, 
it's the same strategies. It's just that they're more in our face, right? Whether it be YouTube or Facebook or whatever. And so shiny object syndrome is, is very easy to, uh, to, uh, to succumb to. So I would say that uh, the first thing you want to look at is for starting off is what are your comfort levels? What's your personality like? Uh, is your personality uh, geared more towards like uh, some people's words? Uh, I don't have to, I don't want to have to negotiate or beat the seller down. Um, I just want to be there to help. Okay, well, that's probably a lease option. Maybe uh, your personality is such that you enjoy the thrill of, of, of trying to get that best price and negotiating and haggling. Okay, well, then probably wholesaling is your best, uh, best option. Maybe your personality is such that you're a very analytical, very, very number-driven analytical, which is not me, but very, very analytical. You love spreadsheets and stuff. Okay, guess what? Boom, commercial, multifamily. You know, all those calculations that go into multifamily commercial outside of cap rate and NOI. You know, you see a spreadsheet for a multifamily property, and that's that's a that's an analytical you know, you know, genius savant that puts that together. So you gotta decide what's your personality like and what's what's gonna fit your personality. Because if you despise having to haggle and negotiate with people, well then wholesaling is not you. It's not you. Um, if uh, if creating a spreadsheet and plugging in numbers and analyzing, doing deep, deep analytic, analytics on a, on a 200 unit apartment complex is not your thing, well then uh, maybe it's just raising capital or maybe it's lease options or maybe it's rehab, but find what your personality aligns with, then pursue that. Okay, so tell us about all this free stuff that people can get their hands on. If they go over to 1000houses.com forward slash J Jackson, what can they expect to find over there? What kind of free stuff are you handing out? Yeah, so first of all, I've got a, a free training that's about an hour and 15 minutes long that dives into pretty deep about, about lease options, about what is a lease option? Where do we find the sellers? Different ways we market to the sellers. How do we find them? How do we find the buyers? And then you know, how does it all come together? So there's about an hour and 15 or so minute training on that. They're also going to get uh, pre-drafted emails. These are the exact emails that I literally copy and paste and send to sellers. Uh, Cause I've got this down to a copy paste structure. So if, if anybody watching this or listening, if you can copy and paste, you can pretty much do uh, what I'm talking about here with lease options. So they're going to get my copy and paste emails. They're going to get my attachments that I send with those e emails, my price sheet, uh, my comparison sheet, my lease option calculator that makes it so easy to to uh, calculate the numbers on a lease option. You literally plug in what the seller is asking and it spits out the numbers for you. So I'm gonna give you all that stuff. Uh, and I'm gonna give you, uh, uh, I think there may be even a couple of risque photos of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, be sure and sign up for that. 1,000. <laughs> Jay Jackson. So uh, man, I appreciate you taking the time to be on. Uh, you know, I, you always deliver a value. You're very entertaining. Uh, even in your boot camps, uh, I, whenever you're in San Antonio, I like to stop by and see you because, man, you just never know. Uh, John Jackson's not very politically correct ever, and so it, it, it's just always fun. And uh, <laughs> go there, it, it, and you make and you make learning fun. You make make the conversation fun, and uh, it's always a good time. So when are you coming to San Antonio next? Uh, I will probably be there in. Uh, in about four weeks, but it'll be a real short trip, but I, I want to come back there with uh, Karina and we'll want to come to your ranch and uh, shoot some animals and stuff. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do that. Yeah. No, we're going to feed the animals, John. I mean, feed the animals them. and then, and tag them with a uh, nine millimeter <laughs> or whatever it is. I don't know. I don't, I've never shot an animal, so I don't freaking know. <laughs> You're coming down to feed the animals, John. Feed, feed, gonna, feed the animals. Uh, I'm gonna feed the animals. Yeah, we've got to be. We don't want to offend anybody here that uh, doesn't eat meat. Or I told something. him we had a petting zoo, and and, and John really lit up. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, man. This is Mitch Stephen with 1000houses.com podcast. I'd like to thank Livecom.com, L-I-V-E-C-O-M-M.com, for uh, sponsoring this episode. There's a reason why I have four days on the market. You can check out Livecom.com, watch the videos on the homepage, and see how uh, the last 200 houses I put up for sale lasted about four days on the market before I got a contract. So check it out, livecom.com. All right, my friend, we'll talk to you soon. John, Take thanks care, for Mitch. being on.